We're with Aradhna Somani at Biri Somani in Cuff Parade here in Mumbai. And uh, who else better to feature this Women's Day than someone who's really gone against what would otherwise be normally expected and uh, taken on the challenge of uh, founding such a spectacular school. Thanks so much for joining Thank us. Thank you. Aradhna. Thank you for having me here. So share with us your story. Very rarely do you come out and talk. And uh, you know, you've done such a fantastic job here with the school. One of the very few IB schools, uh, or one of the first, in fact, uh, in Mumbai. So tell us how it all began, the journey. What uh, led you to actually take that plunge into setting up PD Somani? So uh, I uh, got married into the family, the Somani family, which was already running GD Somani School. Okay. And it was started by my father-in-law, and he encouraged me to uh, study further. So um, typically, I, I was a graduate, and then I got married, and I did my postgraduate. Uh, post graduation MA and then I did my B.Ed. Right. I think doing my B.Ed uh, led, led me to have a greater understanding about schools and teachers. Uh, and as time went by, uh, there was a, a huge demand for uh, grade 11 and grade 12 education. Uh, those days we still had junior colleges, right. uh, HR, Sydenham, in South Bombay okay. I'm talking about. Yeah. And parents were just not uh, happy or satisfied uh, with the education that the kids were getting there. Uh, lack of discipline, uh, no academic focus, and they just wanted something a little more uh, international, a little more disciplined, and that is where we decided to start with the diploma program of IB. Okay. Okay. And this was in 2006. Okay. So we started with uh, grade 11 and grade 12, uh, grade 11 in 2006, which led to grade 12 in 2007. Okay. And um, that is how we just started with BD Sumani. And what was the reaction when you started? Was the people surprised? I think in questioning uh, your family. I and... didn't expect. Yeah, people in the family, of course, thought I was making a great mistake. Why? Because <laughs> uh, because uh, they just felt uh, that uh, it was too new a course. Mm. They didn't know whether uh, we would get enough students. They didn't know whether we would find qualified teachers. Um, whether there would be any takers, whether the kids would want a disciplined uh, environment compared to what they would have had in uh, a regular college. But to my uh, surprise and great satisfaction, the day I opened school, I had my admissions full within a week. Amazing. I mean, I was expecting 30 students and I got 60 students plus wow. counting. So it was like a great so, thrill. That, that's fantastic. And what do you think led to that? Um, uh, you know, led to that kind of a response? Was it the appreciation of the program? How did people know enough about so, it? So, yeah, the appreciation yeah. of the program basically because I think the diploma, uh, the IB diploma program uh, is, uh, you don't have to really choose a stream mm -hmm. in grade 11. So in a typical uh, junior college, you decide you want to do arts, you want to do commerce, or you want to do science. Yeah. In IBDP, you need to do everything. Sure. So you get two more years. And uh, it's a great program because okay. uh, it brings out, uh, it makes you a serious uh, researcher, a serious thinker, critical thinking, collaboration. A lot of uh, skills are developed, which basically makes, prepares you for, for the world that you will be working in. Okay. And even if you decide to go out for education, I think uh, IBDP is still the best program uh, that is there for students wanting to go abroad. Okay, so this was in 2006 or so, you said. Yes. And um, since then, how far have you come in terms of uh, growth, number of students, uh, you know, the kind of impact you've seen the program right. having? So, uh, when we started with uh, grade 11, very soon we had parents saying that, why don't you do something for the little ones, sure. you know. And we said, okay, let's try it. So we started with uh, the preschool. Mm -hmm. And again, the response was tremendous. There we didn't go the IB way, we decided to go the CIPP, the okay. Cambridge International okay. Primary Program. Uh, we decided to do that because it's a little more flexible. Sure. Uh, you uh, can uh, take, do it at your own pace, you can add a lot of things to the curriculum which you would want to. Which The IB is a little more formal and a little more, uh, the IB primary years program yeah. is a little more um, strict. Okay. So uh, we were very happy with that and uh, I think it's just been the divine grace that I have found amazing uh, leaders to run the programs. So yeah. my founding principal was uh, Mr. Gardner, Mr. Don okay. Gardner, who was with me till last June, 13 years wow. he was here. Yeah. And of course, I think a lot of credit goes to him for 
building the school, uh, the secondary school uh, completely. Okay. The primary school, we've had a few changes, but wh whoever uh, was the leadership uh, yeah. position, yeah. Uh, they did a fab job. And right now we have an uh, amazing person, uh, Miss uh, Zoe Hosser. Okay. And uh, she believes in progressive education and, and she's doing wonderful things with the... So talk to us about that. I've heard a lot about uh, some of the uh, you know activities that you have here, like the building blocks. Yeah. Like talk, talk to us about that. So um, basically, um, from uh, kindergarten, that is senior KG, mm -hmm. to grade two and three, uh, we have this block building curriculum, which was started by Zoe. Okay. And uh, in this, uh, through the building blocks, the children uh, learn to collaborate because they work in groups. Yeah. They learn how to do design, uh, so whatever they're learning in the community, whether they have they visited a bank or a club or an art gallery or a, a fire station okay. or a bus station. So they learn how to do first-hand research. So before they do a, a building of it, they actually visit the real bus station or a sure. bank. They um, learn to ask the right questions. They meet the bank manager, they meet someone at the... Mm. They meet conductors and drivers and they ask questions. And after they have done all that, they come and they try and make okay. a building out of it. So they have a lot of maths going into it, physics, wow. uh, yeah. literacy. That's a lot, um, yeah. <laughs> And so the first-hand research is like our... Uh, it's our USP. I mean, our kids really learn how to ask questions okay. and uh, the right questions. And after that, uh, the second-hand research is, of course, you uh, Google, Wikipedia. Right, right. So that's what they do. And uh, I think uh, they're turning out to be uh, amazing uh, students because there are times when they come and interview me uh, regarding school. When they are doing something about right. schools, they want to know something about the management, they right. want to know something about waste disposal, they want to oh, know wow. something about uh, electricity. Sure. Why can't we do this? Why can't we do this? So they try. They understand. They right. also understand my uh, problems, and uh, which is amazing because they have the freedom to come and talk to us anytime they want. True. So you are saying though that apart from, of course, the institutions that have been around forever, today that there is definitely more that's been done in terms of a creating quality institutions. So more options for students, as well as. Um, talent and staff and you know what's actually uh, being provided within those uh, institutions so here at BD Samani as well as an example of that are you looking to further expand uh, uh, yes we are looking to expand uh, we uh, have a, a plot in uh, Khargar now okay. uh, Navi Mumbai mm. and we are looking to set up a school there in the next uh, two years okay uh, we do uh, aim to provide uh, great quality education with progressive learning and whatever the great pedagogies that are there sure. we will probably incorporate a lot of that sure. and build our own uh, curriculum okay. so that is uh, we are looking at that way forward um, teachers I think is going to be our main challenge getting great good teachers because um, teaching somehow is not been the preferred choice as a sure so it's not so much the the positions and and the uh, opportunity for the teachers but it's actually the fact that there aren't as many people coming into the profession into the profession okay but uh, i think uh, that that's uh, the beauty now that with international school and because the salary level that uh, that is being paid to a teacher is far better than uh, a traditional school uh, a lot of teachers uh, a lot of people are entering the teaching profession okay. But the, the gap is still wide. I mean, you still need a whole lot of more teachers. So since it is Women's Day, Ratha, and uh, you know, you have, of course, a fair number of young girls around us at this point as well. Any message or anything you feel that um, young girls today are aspiring towards, you know, that you would like to share with us from, from what you pick up from your students? Definitely. I think uh, one is basically to be yourself. You don't have to change yourself for anybody uh, and uh, you need to uh, have some kind of a focus in life you can't just go along with life uh, without having a focus as to what you want to really do in life I guess after that each to its own you know they do pick up and what are some of the careers of choice these days for the girls, for the girls. <laughs> I think the world is an oyster you have uh, from being a blogger to uh, being a chef uh, to being a dancer uh, 
I mean the traditional ones of uh, all girls becoming teachers and doctors and yeah. uh, that's completely changed. You have anchors and yeah. you have like you have a whole lot of uh, professions that the girls can get into. You know, sure, sure. Um, digital marketing, uh, social media. There's so much more. So the last question to ask you: With the boys, it was always more about engineers, being sick and, hmm? engineers and doctors, engineers and also being successful, being the providers. Yeah. Um, with the girls, it was always more about the softer professions. Uh, what's the driving factor today? Is it, is it like you said, to find your calling? Is it to be famous, <laughs> or is it to be the provider? Uh, a mix of all three. Definitely a mix of all three. But uh, I think uh, our Indian population is also uh, changing. You know, they are looking as women as being providers. So uh, a lot of uh, men are looking at women who can supplement their income, and why not? And definitely why not? Uh, schools are uh, helping parents by uh, providing for after-school activities and things like that, so that the mothers can work later hours. Um, it's become mandatory uh, for institutions to have crèche, so that uh, new mothers can bring their children to school. Right. So I think uh, we are also doing a lot for the women force to uh, fall, so that they can follow their call, uh, calling. And at the end of the day, whatever you do, you have to take pride in it. You have to feel happy about it. Otherwise, you're never going to be successful. So uh, that's what I tell all my friends and their children and my own children that whatever you want to do, first and foremost, you need to feel happy about it. Absolutely. Don't uh, think that I want to do this just because I can make money or I can buy a flat or I can travel. Yeah. That all can come, but provided you are happy with what you're doing. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank Such you. a pleasure you. having you with us here on this Women's Day special. Thank you so much. Thanks so much.